Hi, I'm Jalen Rose, and welcome to the Renaissance Man podcast, proudly presented by the New York Post, a show we cover trends in fashion, entertainment, current events, and everything in between. My next guest is an Oscar award-winning rapper, songwriter, producer, actor, and entrepreneur who's a trailblazer of Southern hip hop as we celebrated turning 50 and undoubtedly one of the most influential figures in the game. Now he can add author to his resume because he has a new memoir out called Chronicles of the Juice Man, which tells the story of his come up in the Southern rap scene and a rise to fame in the legendary group three six mafia he teamed up with hip-hop journalist soren baker to bring his memoir to life and is available right now anywhere you buy books it is my honor to welcome the incredibly talented juicy j to the show what up though my brother what's up man i'm good man how about yourself Good, good. I appreciate you taking the time. I'm a huge fan. And just so you know, as a Detroiter, we got a huge connection with Memphis. So it seems like all of my friends, family, and cousins represent Memphis directly and indirectly. So it's only right if I ask you, tell me how the city of Memphis shaped you and what was it like for you as a kid? Memphis is such a um, such a gangster city. It, it just made me into a, um, a, 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 it's a go-getter, you know what I'm saying? Real hustler, um, never giving up on my dreams because I was trying my best to make it out of the streets. Um, and then also gave me like musical talent, you know, they, uh, Stax Records uh, started in Memphis, B.B. King, Elvis Presley, a lot of great musicians. Um, so just overall with all that, with the blues, the sound of the blues, Bill Street, all that, the influence, here I am, Juicy J, you know what I'm saying? Just uh, when I was growing up, I always used to listen to a lot of uh, artists from Stax Records and try to follow in their footsteps. Like Isaac Hayes is one of my favorites. The legendary Isaac Hayes. Yeah. It's a lot of platinum plaques, a lot of gold records on the wall. So tell me, when did you know that you wanted to be into music? Um, I probably was like, um, that could have been six or seven, or maybe 10. I used to watch this TV show called uh, Sha Na Na. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I was into hey. this TV show. <laughs> and that's when, that, that, that's what made me want to be in music. I wanted to be a producer and a singer, songwriter, kind of like, uh, you know, just like Isaac Hayes and Barry White. And um, when I heard first heard the Sugar Hill Gang, that's what got me interested in rap. But like I say before then, I was always one, ever since I watched Sha Na Na, I just wanted to be this producer, musician. That was my love. And because you were part of one of the greatest, most legendary groups of all time, I want to drill down on something that represents rap music and hip hop to the fullest. You mentioned Isaac Hayes. You mentioned B.B. King. Just talk about their influence on Memphis. Man, they got a lot of influence on Memphis. B.B. King, I, I believe they still got that restaurant down. He had a restaurant down. I actually seen him perform live, rest in peace. Wow. At his restaurant. Wow. Yeah, I met and I met Isaac Hayes at the car wash before. And then on the, when we shot the movie uh, Hustle and Flow, I met him on the set. And I, I had just bought this Maybach and I was driving around in it in Memphis and he was in the car. He jumped in the car with me and we just talked about old times and stuff. And he told me how he how he used to ride around in Memphis and in in um I think he had a gold he had a gold plate of Cadillac. Mm. And for the youngsters out there that may or may not know, please align us with the origin of the group the members of the group, and how you came up with the name. Uh, we all came up with the name. Lord Infamous, um, uh, uh, I call, he was like lead uh, rapper of the group. He uh, he, he was doing a, like, we was doing a record. He was just, he was rapping. He said the triple six thugs. Da, 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 da. And we took that word triple six and just made, came up with triple six mafia. Me, Paul, and Lord Infamous. And uh, he was like uh, the first group. Like we was the first members of the group. Me, Paul, and Lloyd was the first members of the group of Triple Six Mafia. Then we pulled in a bunch of other people. And um, it was like 20 people in the group. 
And then we sized it down to six people. And then that was like the original, like Gangsta Boo, Koopsta, um, Crunchy Black, um, mm. and me and Paul and Lord Infants. So it was six people in the group. So uh, it was Triple Six Mafia. And then we got a lot of doors slammed in our face because people mm. was like, oh, that's the devil. That's this, that's that. Y'all guys are crazy. So wow. we had to change it to um, Three Six Mafia. We didn't really have to change it, but I right. felt like we should have changed it because we was trying to do something bigger than just be underground. We want to dominate the underground and take it all the way up to the take it up a notch. So we changed it to Three Six Mafia, and um, here we are. For every entertainer, for every athlete, for every artist, there's a moment and likely a song. What record? When you guys were in studio, did you hear and know this is what's gonna help take us to the next level? Um, hmm. miss a lot of those songs. I mean, we had a lot of great records. I, I would say, as far as like our biggest, our biggest song, I would say "Stay Fly" because um, it was um, it was like a club record, and then it was still kind of more like radio friendly too. You know, they could play it on the radio too. And it was super catchy. I mean, like, you know, stay fly. I, I, I mean, everybody was saying that. So uh -huh. that, that record, we had a lot of great records. Don't get me wrong. We had riding spinners and sipping on some scissor, but that record actually just took us to the next level on a bigger scale. You know, we started coming to California a little bit more, doing shows in California, doing shows everywhere. People was calling for us uh, to do shows overseas. So we went overseas and toured, and it was off that stay fly, uh, um, that, that album that we dropped that had stay fly on it. Most and you guys have a crazy stage show. I've seen you guys perform multiple times. Yeah. Can you, for our audience, enlighten them one of your favorite memories of being on tour? Wow. Man. We've had so many. I, I would say <laughs> what was very different for me is when we went to Japan. Mm. And like, you know, everybody, they were speaking in, you know, their language. And then when Slob on Knob came on, we dropped the song they was they knew all the words they didn't know too much english but they knew all the words of slavo and all they were saying the words in english and everything i was shocked i was like wow and the whole club went crazy and it was this was in japan and this is this could have been probably like probably like 2008 maybe mm -hmm. when i was over there that's crazy I, yeah that was shocking to me that, that that i was blown away by that i was like wow what other artist or performers, have you guys been on this, a bill with and all of a sudden got a chance to meet them, watch them perform, and knew, wow, we've arrived? What you mean, like, be like featured, featured with? Yep, like other people that was on shows, but you got other groups, other acts that all of a sudden you like, wait a minute, they fans of ours? They know our name? Um... And that's pretty much everybody we we didn't been around, you know. Um, oh. like back in the day, we used to do uh like little radio promo shows with Destiny Child. Mm. And uh, I remember uh Kelly Rowland was telling me that she was like, "Hey, I love your music. I love y'all music." <laughs> and I, I was, you know, I was shocked, you know, to have to see an R and B group, uh, you know, they said they like Three Six Mafia. You know what I'm saying? This is way back in the day. This is when this was when Destiny Child was first getting started. And, uh, you know, stuff like that would shock me, though, when I hear R&B singers say, even like 112, they was like, man, we love y'all music and stuff like that. I was shocked. I, was, I didn't just, you know, I didn't think everybody listened to, uh, you know, 3-6 Mafia. Because you know, that stuff was real, super underground. No doubt. It wasn't on the radio that much. And, you know, back in the day, um, a lot of people didn't embrace it as much. You know, it was just like straight underground music. But, um, you know, uh, UGK, Pimp C, Bombi, they embraced it. They were like, man, we love y'all music with y'all music you know stuff like that which is it was it's cool even like outcast you oh. know what i'm saying Outcast, you know big you know outcast always been this big crossover group mm -hmm. and back in the day it was just like super huge and when they had reached out for uh one of our members in the group gangsta boo to rap on one of their songs we were shocked we was like wow man that's that's dope you know because we were just underground right we they had maybe one record that got a little bit of radio play and a you know a little radio play in atlanta memphis and that pretty much was it you know maybe mississippi arkansas but we didn't we weren't no national, big national group till we came out with like, I would say State Fly really just took us to the next, next level, you know? Absolutely. And 
and, and but that's what artists to me miss nowadays is you guys were able to stay true to your voice, stay true to your sound, stay true to your audience. And then all of a sudden mainstream had to come to you, not the other way around. Yeah. And I remember when Hustle and Flow was out and I appreciated the 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 shine that Memphis got in so many ways. And then all of a sudden you guys hit record won an Oscar. You got an Oscar. Talk about that period of your life when you were part of that movie and all of a sudden you standing on stage winning the, one of the most coveted awards in the history of entertainment. Man, I want to say, man, like, it's still amazing right now. You know what I mean? We had, the, one, of the, we had the, one of the most longest Oscar parties of all time when we lived in L.A. Uh, <laughs> rest in peace, John Singleton. <laughs> for reaching out to us and uh, Craig Brewer, you know, shout out to Craig Brewer from Memphis, Tennessee. He wrote uh, and directed the movie. John Singleton produced the movie. Uh, we was the first people they reached out to to do music in the movie. And uh, man, like I knew something was going to be special about the movie. And we did our thing on it. We, we, we wrote a few songs on there and one of them got nominated and then we ended up performing and winning. God is great, man. It's a blessing, man. Like your dreams do come true, bro. Like real, real shit. Like whatever you dream and whatever you work hard for, it's gonna come. No true. question. And you guys are really talented and disciplined in order for it to happen by staying true to your sound. I have to ask you, and rest in peace, the legend John Singleton. I'm glad you brought him up. What do you remember most about the longest Oscar party that's ever taken place? <laughs> Playboy Mansion. The parties at the Playboy Mansion, man. That was been there, been there. Yeah, that's some wild stuff, man. You know about it. <laughs> some wild. <laughs> stuff. Woo. Such that's great what's up. Man. So that's what's up. Yeah. And also, like memories like that for those who may or may not know. And I talked about it in the introduction. You have your memoir coming out right now, and congratulations. Yes. As a fellow author, I know there's so many things personally, professionally, that we keep on the inside. And at some point we feel like this is the time that I want to share my story. So why now do you feel like it was your chance, your time to share your story? You know, I really never put a time on it because I always wanted to write a book maybe like a couple of years ago. And we went actually, me and my manager, we went shopping around different companies and um, we just ran into, uh, you know, my homeboy, uh, Soren Baker, I've been on it for years. Um, he helped me write the book. And then we made all the connections through him and uh, everything just came together, man. So here it is. You know, it, it never was like a timeline. Like I got to write my movie when I'm this, you know, this age or this year that I just, I just did it. And it and it was weird. It came out, you know, this year, it just came out September 5th, you know, 50 year of uh, hip hop, mm -hmm. which I wasn't even paying attention. I don't even, you know, I don't know when hip hop was created or when it's, you know, man, I know it was around like in the late 80s, 70s, uh, late 70s or whatever. But, you know, I really didn't, I don't really think about stuff like that. I just felt like, as you know, we was writing the book. Uh, I was dealing with a lot. I was right as I was writing the book. My mom had got cancer. She passed away. I was still writing the book in tears. And um, it just came out, you know, this year. So everything just kind of came together, really. It wasn't a plan. Chronicles of the Juice, man. And I want to applaud you, my brother, because as somebody that lost his mother the last couple of years, I, I heard the pain when you said I was crying and writing the book. And I want to thank you for being radically honest about all of the obstacles you've overcome. I've seen a couple of your interviews. I watched you on The Breakfast Club. You mentioned the loss of your mother, group members, substance abuse, mental health issues, and the ever-changing music industries, and just flat out all of the trappings of success. So how has this book helped you process those hardships and keep on going? Um, You know, letting everything out, man. I feel like I'm, you know, if I can help somebody, man, because there's a lot of people that have these issues, and, and not just in music, you know, outside of music. Mm -hmm. And I go through drug abuse and just, you know, everything, mental um, health, you know, all that. So. If I could just touch some lives, man. You know, I, I feel like we all here for a purpose. And um, our purpose is to uh, help people and just try to, you know, get people closer to God if we can. So that's what that's what that's the mission I'm on right now. 
I admire that a lot. And there's so many people in particular in the inner city where you're from, like Memphis, me from Detroit, people that look like us. When you say, what do you want to be for a living? They say an entertainer. They say an athlete. Mm -hmm. They want to be an artist. Can you talk to the public about some of the sacrifices and some of the things you've overcome as it relates to turbulence that allowed you to understand that this is what you really want to do and you were not going to be denied? Yeah, when I was coming up as a youngster, I was just, you know, I lost a lot of friends, bro. Like, you know, I lost a lot of friends and just because I was on a different kind of path than them. Some mm. people were on, you know, going left, doing street stuff. And, you know, I've been in the street life and, you know, done a few things, made a few moves, but that wasn't my goal to keep doing that. You know, my goal was to be successful in music and keep going. So I lost a lot of friends. A lot mm. of people just, we went on the same page, even though we were good friends. We just went on the same page and, and and different things too. Like even invested in myself. Like I sold my car for studio time back in the day. You know, you have to mm -hmm. invest in yourself. You have to have patience. And you know, I worked a real job too. You know, I know what it feels like to catch a bus or walk from uh, home to work and back and punch a clock. I, I understand the whole process. So you got to really try to stay focused. Some people let themselves go. I never really let myself go. Mm -hmm. um, I was close. I was close getting there, but I just never let myself go. I just stayed focused, stayed praying, stayed hustling, stayed on the grind, and I didn't let nobody stand in my way. And anybody that was on the wrong page, I just dis I just uh, distanced myself, you know. And uh, like I said, I, I lost a lot of friends, man. Like you know, a lot of a lot of friends I had, I just I just couldn't hang around them because they was on you know demon time. Right, right. And and, and people see the success now, they. Mm -hmm understand that you're because you've become a legend but i always want to highlight those things because there's always going to be challenges that we need to overcome and young people i want y'all to listen to what he just said he's overcome losses he's had to reinvent himself he's continued to work hard and be disciplined for his goals to happen so i gotta ask you juice man because not many people could come on this show and just have plaques on plaques on plaques on the wall. So I got to ask you, what are some of those plaques you got hanging up on the wall? Man, I got all kinds of stuff. I got bands that make a dance. I got um, <laughs> records I produced. We got, uh, I think it's a Young Buck album back there. I mean, that's just some of my stuff. And I got plaques. Man, I can go for days. Man, I got plaques everywhere, man. I, <laughs> I got plaques all on the wall over here. Just here, here. It's just so many plaques, man. God has been great. You know, I've been staying focused, man. Just staying focused. And I've been working. And every time I turn around, I get a new plaque in the mail. You know, I get plaques with the big S. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what it's all about, man. You know, and motivate people, man. Keeping them Absolutely. moving and motivate. And, and, and as we talk about motivation, it's only right I have to ask you this. Can you please name your top five Southern rap artists? Um, Project Pat. Mm. Number one. Andre 3000, number two. Hmm. Um, geez, man, so many, man. Uh, Lil Wayne. Hmm. Um, Bum B. Mm. Oh, we got lyrics, man. No question. Bars. Bars, man. Bars. Um, how many is that? Four? No. Yep. <laughs> uh, Man, it's so many. Let me see. Um, uh, Ti. Ooh, Ti. That's, that's, that 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 list. I'm glad you just did that because as you were telling me that list, I was thinking that list can stand up to anybody anywhere at any time. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to revisit that because that could, that that southern list can stand up to anybody anytime. So so that that also has me thinking like, if somebody was going to Memphis, getting introduced to Memphis, can you please give them some of the lingo, some of the places they would go eat? Like, give us a snapshot of Memphis for those that hope to visit one day. Oh, yeah, man. There's a lot of places out there, man. They got Interstate Barbecue. They got Jack Purtles. Man, they got, uh, ooh, man, they got so many. They got Gus Fried Chicken Spot, mm -hmm. um, Rendezvous. Um, 
And there's so many places out there, man. There's so many places. Maybe what? it's a city, man. Just, just, just be careful. Keep your strap on you. <laughs> you know? No, no doubt, no doubt. And also, I have to ask you as a, a veteran. Um, I love John Morant. I got a chance to interview him after he had his initial meeting with Commissioner Silver. We know he had a little turbulence since then, but yeah. I already know little bro going to be back this year, all NBA and Memphis about to be one of the top teams in the West and contending. And a lot of people was talking about the influence of music because a couple of the songs he was dancing to it was NBA young boy. What do you feel about the impact and the influence of music on your audience and on the culture? I mean, music is everything. It's in movies. It's in sports. It's in everything, man. I mean, even weddings. They playing. They playing rap music at weddings now. You know, I keep hearing, hearing <laughs> player at weddings and stuff. But I mean, I, I think everybody their own person, man. Um, I mean, like we all make mistakes in life, man. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we can't hold it against anybody, man. Like he did what he did. He made some mistakes. He's a young, young guy. You know, I when I when I was around his age, I made so many mistakes. I probably made more than him. Preach. So I, don't, I don't. I don't think we should throw anybody underneath the bus or even try to judge. I think we should just pray for our brother. Yep. And, and keep him and keep moving forward. You know, I think every. I think everything gonna be okay. I totally agree. And don't be surprised if we see each other at a Grizzlies game this year or two. Because I'm definitely gonna get down there to go represent my little brother when he get back from his suspension. And I so, also have to ask you this: as we celebrate. 50 years of hip hop, which started in 1973. And the reason why I know is that's the year I actually was born. And now you see Nas turn 50 as well. Yeah. What are your hopes for the future of hip hop? Um, My hopes for the future, I just hope we can um do some, I mean, I hear a lot of people trying to be like each other and trying to sound like it. I hope we can do some some different things, you know, like somebody be, be original with their style and, uh, not even worry about what somebody else is doing. Just do whatever comes to mind. You know, I feel like now we need to have some, it's a little bit different stuff, you know, different sounding beats, different sounding flows, stuff like that. That's all. Because, you know, when I was coming up with 3C's Mafia, we all had, we had, we called our album Mystic Styles when our first album because we all had different kind of styles. Nobody wanted, I didn't want to be like, uh, Lord of Us, Lord of Us didn't want to be like me. You know, we all had our different styles and I think that would made us stick out because we had our thing. Like we, when you seen Juicy J, you seen Juicy J. When you seen Lord of Us, you know, you seen Lord of Us, you knew who who stood out. It's all oh, that's Lord of Us. He does that triplet flow. The, the, the Juicy J, he got the, the choppy flow. You know, Paul has his flow, Gangsta Boo, Crunchy. We all had our different styles. And I feel like these days, you know, a lot of people, a lot of music don't sound too different. A lot of it sounds the same, which right. is cool. You know, I still love it. But I mean, I'm just waiting to hear what somebody else got. If somebody else gonna bring something different to the table, then I'm I'm willing to listen, you know. No I doubt. Like you yeah. earned the right to say that because you're a writer. You're a yeah. producer. You've worked on all sides of the game. And so, and you're a seasoned veteran. And that's what's going to allow the space to continue to grow that creativity. Yep. Before I let you get out of here, Juicy J, I have a rapid fire segment called Gone in 60 Seconds. You ready to do this? Let's get it. Who is someone that you have not collaborated with that you still hope to in the future? Um, Lady Gaga. I got two. Lady Gaga and, and Adele. Mm, I had to hit up my guy, Rich Paul. We need to make that happen. That would be dope. Yeah, That would be cool. Which album or single that you've worked on that you're actually the most proud of? Ooh. Which album was? I would say, um, I mean, it's a lot of stuff uh, that I'm proud of in Three Six Mafia. But as far as like my solo stuff, the way uh, Bands Make a Dance, the Stay Trippy album, that was a great album. It was a great experience for me. Um, how um, I came up with that song, and you know, I didn't know, didn't think nobody was gonna dig me as a solo artist. I wasn't even really just trying to be a solo artist. I was just really just trying to keep the Three Six Mafia name and the whole vibe rolling, and it just. It happened, man, like overnight, damn near. You know, I woke up and all of a sudden my the song was number one. It was underground. It hadn't been in the red hadn't been hadn't even been on the radio nowhere like worldwide, but Atlanta. Atlanta was playing like crazy and it popped in the in the charts and it was underground. It wasn't even on uh that was, that was before streaming. It didn't, it would it wasn't even on Apple Music or nothing like that. Well uh Apple uh it, Apple. That's when we get to download the 
We had to buy yep. it. It wasn't even on there, no CDs, none of that stuff. It was just like mixtapes, you know, in the street. And it blew up and I worked on my album and it went gold. It was, it was crazy. It happened so fast. <laughs> also, yeah. please name one artist that you think has now and next. Um, hmm. I would say um a yeet. Hmm. Yeet. Yeet's dope. Um, I think he has now, and I think he has next. I'm making sure y'all check that out. I'm gonna have to check him out. Where are you from? Give me a snapshot about who that is. I think he might be from LA. Um, I don't know too much about him. I know, you know, he got dope music. His music that's is hard. hard. I don't know. I don't know too much about his background, but his music is really dope. And see, that's as genuine as it gets, y'all. Being a fan of the artist, keep his ear to the street, understanding who's got now and who's got next. And lastly, but certainly not least, what would you say is your favorite memory? What was your favorite memory to revisit in your memoir? Um, my favorite memory to revisit. Hmm. I would say uh when we won the Oscar, we went to um Prince's house. Oh. You and gotta give us a Prince story. You gotta well, tell that story. Well, this is this is funny because he had a party and we, you know, we pulled up, we're like, hey, we just won an Oscar, we're trying to get in Prince party, Oscar party. He said no. <laughs> um and <laughs> I didn't really care, man. It was just the idea. I was like, man, Prince just, you know, I, I didn't even see him. Somebody came came out, they talked to us, and they went back in and asked him, could we come in? And he, he said no. They said, hey, man, Prince said, y'all can't come in. But I was just like, I grew up listening to Prince, and I was, I'm a big fan of Prince. Like, I wanted to be like Prince, you know? Like, he was like one of my first, you know, after Sha Na Na, like, Prince was like, oh, this dude can play piano, guitar. I want to be just like Prince. Right. I was, I was, I, I didn't even care, man. I just felt like, oh man, Prince just turned us down. I thought it was funny, you know. Right. I, I get, I would love to relive that moment because if I could relive that moment, man, I, this, 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 that, that, if I can get the second time to do that, I would get out the car and I'd be like, hold up, man, fuck that, I'm going inside. <laughs> <laughs> you no. let me, we won tonight, also. Yeah, I got, I got to at least get a picture, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Chronicles yeah. of the Juice Man out right now. Juicy J. Legendary 3-6 Mafia, Oscar-winning rapper, songwriter, producer, actor, and entrepreneur. Much love, my brother, and continued Thank success. You. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you, man. You know what I'm saying? You still out here. We still out here as OG, OG's doing it. Thank you. Thank you, family. Appreciate that.